Beginning in January of last year, Kolb made deposits of $120 into his account for several consecutive months and then made withdrawals of $50 from the account for each of the remaining months last year. There were no other transactions in the account last year. If the closing balance of Carl's account at the end of May was $2,600, what was the range of the monthly closing balances of Carl's accounts last year? So in other words, we know a few things. We know that he's depositing money for several months in a row, depositing $120 each month. At some point, he changes over from the depositing and he's withdrawing money, $50 a month. We don't know where that changeover happens. We also know at the end of May, he has $2,600. So if we could figure out when the changeover point was, then we could figure out the closing balance at the end of every month last year. So statement number one tells us that the closing balance at Carl's account at the end of April was less than 2625. So April is less than 2625. Well, we know that at the end of May, what he has is $2,600. And we know that between those two points, on the 15th of May, only one of two things could happen. Either we added 120 or we subtracted 50. Well, if we subtracted 50, there'd be no way that we could start at 2625 and end up at at 2600. So we know for a fact that what had to happen at the 15th of May is that we added $120. So that's interesting. So that means that for the at least the first five months of the year we're adding $120. But we don't know when after that. We know that the change ever happened after that point, but we don't know when after that point. So this statement by itself is insufficient. Now forget about that information. That's useful information, but forget about it for the moment. Let's focus purely on statement number two. Statement number two tells us that the closing balance of Carl's account at the end of June was less than 2675. So again, May we know is equal to 2600, the end of May, the end of June is less than 2675. Well, again, on the 15th of June, only one of two things could have happened. We either added 120 or subtracted 50. Well, if we added 120, there'd be no way that it would go up and it would be a value less than 2675. So the only way that we could get a value less than 2625, starting from 2600, is if we subtracted 50. So we know that the subtracting of 50 has to happen in June, and so June and everything after we're subtracting 50. From statement number two, we have no idea when subtracting 50 starts, and so we can't locate the starting point given this information only, so this is insufficient. Both statements are insufficient, so now we're going to put the information together, and you can kind of see where this is going. In May, we know that we're still adding 120, in June, we know that we're subtracting 50. So it means the first five months of the year, we're adding 120. The last seven months of the year, we're subtracting 50. And that does allow us to figure out the, the closing balance at the end of each month last year. So statement one and statement two together are sufficient, and the answer is C.